When it comes to comparisons, at least in terms of the ones I've produced in the past, this one is definitely the closest in terms of price and performance, which made it fun, but also somewhat challenging to produce. I mean, looking at these two machines, the differences, at least on the surface, are pretty clear. But in a lot of ways, their DNA is very similar. Both of these machines, the Lamarzoco GS3 and Sanremo U, are designed to give the user a maximum level of control. But as you'd expect, a machine that hasn't been changed much since it was released in 2008, and one from the early 2020s, will likely have some differences. And that's a theme that tends to carry through this entire video. But considering they're both in similar price points, have an array of similar features, and seen by many as dream machines, this side-by-side -side is truly a tight contest between two heavy hitters. So of course, as I often do in these comparisons, I'll be going over each machine, pointing out where they're similar and where they're different in terms of features and performance, and of course, I'll do a good old-fashioned blind tasting. So without any further fanfare, let's get these two espresso beasts into the octagon. As I already mentioned, there's about 12 years of difference between the introduction of these two machines, but both of them still find their ways to the top of many baristas' wish lists. I mean, even on the surface, it's pretty clear which one has a more modern-day futuristic influence, and which is built more on heritage and purposeful functionality. And of course, it goes without saying, but the San Remo carries a lot more tech than the GS3. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. The user interface on the U is essentially a smartphone slapped securely onto the group, which gives you a massive level of control from real-time shot data, graphs, and digital profile programming, to auto-cleaning and energy-saving modes. Inversely, and if we're still talking in terms of cell phones, the GS3 is a Nokia brick. There's only a simple and, let's face it, outdated looking screen and keypad, with a handful of buttons that can only perform basic functions, like a standby mode and temperature adjustments. Of course, both machines have PID control and dual boilers, which is all things you'd expect in that price range, but where the GS3 sort of lacks in technology, it really tries to make up for in sheer size. Inside the Lamarzoco sits a 1.3 liter coffee and 3.5 liter steam boiler, which makes the used half liter brew and one liter steam boiler feel quaint by comparison. Though in most home circumstances, the U doesn't seem to struggle to keep up, and just lacks a bit of the oomph behind the GS3's wand. Moving now to the groups, both the Sanremo U and Lamarzoco GS3 use commercial technology that isn't really hot off the presses. The Sanremo uses the SR61, which is a modified E61 that was patented in 1961, and the Lamarzoco, of course, uses its in-house design but highly temperature-stable saturated group design that was patented in 1970. The use of an E61 group is probably the most divisive and controversial thing Sanremo did with the U, as it's often seen as less than ideal, particularly in machines in this price range, but they do try to combat its struggles with temperature stability by adding a heating element in the group itself. Meanwhile, the saturated group in the GS3 is often seen as the most temperature-stable technology out there. Essentially, the brew boiler, neck, and group are one piece, and hollowed out to allow the area around the brew chamber to be filled with water at the same temperature as the water passing through it. And finally, in terms of pressure production, the GS3 uses a rotary pump, and the Sanremo U a gear pump. Now, the rotary pump is very common in commercial and high-level prosumer machines, as it's very stable, reliable, relatively quiet, but it spins at a constant speed. The gear pump, on the other hand, that's inside the Sanremo U is still commercially capable, stable, and quiet, but it's a lot rarer to find in prosumer home machines. And this is because it's volumetric, meaning the speed and pressure is directly adjusted by the user, and on each revolution of the pump, it puts out a known amount of water. But beyond that brief overview of the pumps, there are some differences there worth discussing, and I think it's worthy of its own section. One thing that you may have noticed that has been conspicuously missing throughout this comparison so far is any mention of the manual paddles. The GS3 uses a mechanical paddle attached to a conical valve that either increases or decreases pressure in the group by increasing or decreasing the flow of water that enters the group, but the pressure and flow rate from the rotary pump is always the same. The U on the other hand uses an electric paddle, and uses a gear pump that directly manages pressure at the pump through adjusting its speed, and in turn, its flow rate. So I think the simplest way of saying this is that the GS3 MP controls pressure via flow, and the Sanremo U controls flow via pressure. 
and operating both paddles is the same process, though the U is considerably easier to control accurately, while the GS3's is more of a skill in itself. And of course, both are capable of profiling espresso, which is essentially manipulating the pressure throughout the entire shot. This includes everything from pre-infusion to ramp down. And this control can have a wide array of effects on the overall extraction and flavor of the finished espresso, allowing the end user to increase or decrease inherent flavors in their coffee. But that rabbit hole is a topic for an entirely different video. Of course, we can't spend our entire time going over spec sheets and pump variances and not get into the entire reason these two machines exist, brewing espresso. And considering we're talking about two widely known and well-respected manufacturers, it's not going to be a hot take to say these both brew quality espresso. But as I often do in these comparison or side-by-side -side videos, I arranged a blind tasting. But I think in the case of these two machines, it's definitely not a competition and it's more or less a fact-finding mission. And today to help me on this mission, I've invited my friend John from Necessity Coffee, a highly skilled and seasoned barista, to come over, dial in a random coffee they chose, and pull me some shots to see which machine truly stands out. So a short time later, John had some shots ready for tasting. And after my first sips of each espresso, it was clear the differences were pretty minimal. Both shots were fruit forward with a nice sweet round body and a pleasant finish. Yet, over the course of a few sips, I noticed that a slightly harsher, bitter flavor began to emerge in one of the shots. And that shot happened to be from the U. And then we enter the world of why, and it really could be a variety of reasons. It could be as simple as personal preferences, maybe differing shower screens or group designs. But one reason that I ran across that really surprised me when I compared the GS3 to the Bianca was flow rate. So when I tested this, I found the U produces one more gram per second at its lowest setting and almost two grams at full open. This to me means the U builds pressure faster, which means in most cases, its shots will run faster as well. Even though that difference is incredibly subtle, espresso is of course a finicky beast, and a change like that can absolutely change how it extracts and what flavor profile ends up in the cup. And when I asked John about dialing in, he said that the U did flow faster than the GS3, which required a slight adjustment finer to match the recipes, i.e. the time and pressure profile. So after going back and brewing shots again on the same grind and yield and completely disregarding shot time altogether, I'm confident in saying that the difference I tasted in the finish was likely to a marginally finer grind that possibly extracted a bit more than the one from the GS3, resulting in that slightly harsher, bitter finish. So this is the long, albeit anticlimactic way of saying that the San Remo U and GS3 perform very similarly in the cup once you determine the main variable, throwing off the results. As someone who loves espresso and has been fortunate enough to get their sticky barista paws on a lot of different machines over the last few years, I can't help but feel this strong sense of deja vu with this side-by-side, -side because this comparison and the general takeaways that I get from these two machines feels a lot like how I felt comparing the GS3 to the Lelite Bianca. And just a quick warning here, you're now entering personal opinion territory. The U sort of feels like what the GS3 MP would be if it were designed today. It's a true hot rod, fast and focused. And the GS3, on the other hand, feels wise, understated, and stable. And it gives you a more hands-on, tactile brewing experience. There's no autopilot. There's no easy mode. It's up to you, an innately flawed sack of meat and blood, to handle things from start to finish. And that level of risk and reward, or risk versus reward, is something that I appreciate. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love technology, but for some reason when it comes to making coffee, I still much prefer that semi-analog experience, where I have not only control, but a connected feeling. I think the best way to describe this to a broader audience is it's like the difference between a manual transmission and paddle shifters. Equally as effective, but not equally as engaging. In the end though, maybe it's familiarity speaking, and with espresso quality not really being part of the equation, Consistently, the GS3 manual paddle just feels like it delivers the brewing experience I want. But on that note, I think it's time I start wrapping this one up, and as always, pass the conversation on to you. What are your thoughts on the GS3 and the U? Which one would you choose? And do you think that the introduction of new technology is a net benefit when it comes to espresso machines? And there really is no right or wrong answer. I'm just curious to hear your thoughts. So drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. 
hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday, check out my Instagram at Spromethius for content throughout the week, help support the channel by considering becoming a member for exclusive access, and as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.